all cultures, music, poetry, mythology, and literature have one thing in common. The heart is the center of human emotion. Our language is filled with words like heartbreak, heartfelt, heartwarming, stone-hearted. And we associate our strongest emotions with the feelings in our chest. Of course, we know that's not completely accurate. Uh, modern medicine has shown us that our brains are actually the source of human emotion. But our hearts are deeply connected to our emotional state. They react to our perce perceptions of the world, our feelings of anxiety or stress or happiness. Do something with me. Take your hand and put it on the left side of your chest and pause. Breathe. Feel your heartbeat. Is it beating quickly or slowly? Is it beating regularly or irregularly? Is it responding to stress or anxiety or peace and calm? Our hearts are clearly the barometers of our mental health and our emotional health. But they also indicate things about our cardiovascular health, of course, too. They tell things about our risk for heart disease, how healthy we are, and how effectively our hearts are pumping. Encoded into each and every beat of your heart are hidden signals that can be a source of information to us, to doctors, to understand our own risk for cardiovascular disease. In my career, I've pursued that question, how do we understand the hidden signals of the human heart? And how do we optimize that understanding for the best health possible? My name is Connor Landgraf. I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about using AI and machine learning to help us better detect the early signs of cardiovascular and pulmonary disease. Now, of course, to understand the present of medicine, we have to go back and diagnose the past. And the story of the stethoscope is particularly interesting and how we think about hearing the human heart. The stethoscope is actually one of the very first medical devices created to help us more comprehensively understand patients in the physical exam. In 1812, Dr. René Lineck, who was practicing in Paris, France, was struggling to hear the heart sounds of his patients. And at the time, the best practice was that the physician would take their ear and press it against the chest of the patient to try to hear those faint sounds of the patient's breathing and of their heart. And even at that time, medical literature knew that there were distinguishing characteristics, that we could identify disease and health based upon those sounds, that we could use those to more confidently treat patients. But as you can imagine, uh, putting your ear against patient's chest is not the most optimal way of hearing their heart sounds. And so Dr. Leinick, being an industrious and, and entrepreneurial physician, took a wooden dowel and drilled a hole through it so that he could place it onto the patient's chest and channel and funnel the sounds of their heart and breath to his ears. Today, almost 200 years later, this is still the stethoscope. A rubber tube with a hole through it, some ear tips, and a metal chest piece. And all the intelligence, all the real brain power lies between the physician's ears. Listening is one of the first principles of medicine. The physician hears their patient with an open mind, synthesizes, processes, interprets, and then comes up with risks and recommendations. And the stethoscope in many ways perfectly embodies that practice of medicine that open-minded pursuit of inquiry to ascertain the truth. But it is still incredibly challenging. 200 years on, the physician is still left to hear those subtle differences themselves. And in fact, in med school, the method for training physicians to hear heart sounds and lung sounds is they're given a CD-ROM. Does anyone know what a CD-ROM is anymore? <laughs> 
And they're told to listen to the heart sounds over and over and over again. They're told that that repetition and that pattern matching process, that training of their ears, can help them more confidently and accurately hear those heart sounds. Of course, there's a lot of challenges with that. No one hears everything quite the same way. No one's ears are exactly the same. And there's, there's tremendous subjectivity and variability in how each physician hears and interprets patients' heart sounds and lung sounds. Not surprisingly, I think you could imagine that it isn't quite that accurate. Current data shows that physicians are only about 50% accurate at detecting common cardiac and pulmonary conditions with a stethoscope. And it's just fundamentally a really challenging thing to do. I liken it to a musical ear or perfect pitch. It's a skill that requires tremendous time and experience and training to be able to do effectively. But the question we asked was, what if we could fundamentally move beyond human senses? Why do we need human hearing to be that primary arbiter of truth and objectivity with a stethoscope? Can we apply technology? Can we apply large data sets of heart sounds and lung sounds to help bring consistency and reliability to this most important patient exam? What we described it as was, can we build Shazam for heartbeats? And we started this entrepreneurial journey with some classmates in college to fundamentally question the basic principles of the stethoscope. Could we reinvent how physicians use acoustics and medicine to provide more confidence, consistency, and objectivity to that exam? We hypothesized that AI technologies, machine learning advances, when trained with a large enough set of data, a large enough repository of clinical knowledge, could outperform even some of the most skilled providers and help deliver that objectivity and consistency to those tools. To the physical exam that's used hundreds of millions of times per year, we could reinvent that to be an early disease detection opportunity for cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases. And we could deliver the accuracy of a cardiologist in the pocket of every physician and every nurse. Now, to make this technology a reality, we knew that we had to go back to the fundamental building blocks. We'd need data, and tremendous amounts of it. And then we scoured the clinical literature. We talked to large health systems, to academic institutions, to med schools, trying to track down those data sets. We imagined they must exist. And found, rather shockingly, that aside from a handful of CD-ROMs, no one in medicine had been cataloging and curating heart sounds, building that repository of knowledge, even though it is that most ubiquitous, classic, well-known, medical exam. We realized that we would have to do this data collection ourselves. We would have to recruit an army of providers to help us build this data set, build the scale that we needed to be the accuracy, to deliver the accuracy that we felt was necessary. And they needed the right tools. The tools of the day, the tools of standard medicine are still totally analog. I think you could say almost archaic. And we couldn't digitize, we couldn't capture, we couldn't dynamically understand over time those heart sounds with the tools we had available. So we set about completely redesigning and imagining how we could make this a tool that could actually deliver the digital insights that we wanted to. Now, of course, we know that this stethoscope is not just a medical device. It's not just an instrument of care. It's a symbol probably the most symbolic tool that healthcare providers use. It's a symbol of academic credibility. It's a badge of capability for some of the most credible people on the planet. And so we knew that if we were going to rebuild a stethoscope, we couldn't change what it fundamentally was. It had to look and feel and be perceived as the stethoscope because it is so much more than just a device. We had a eureka moment when we were thinking about this. We said, how do we keep the tool that physicians know and love, the tool that they trust, that they probably got in med school, but add on the digital capability so that it can be a more powerful diagnostic tool? It can be a better part of their early disease detection journey. And we said, well, we can take the chest piece off the stethoscope. And we can put the digital capabilities right in line, keeping that fundamental form that fundamental shape of the device the same and allowing physicians to get the full digital capabilities 
and the ability to record, capture, and annotate that data for the future. Now that we have the digital tools, we came back to that problem. How do we get the data? How can we actually capture a large enough body of heart sounds and lung sounds so that we can build the algorithms with the accuracy that we need? We launched a giant crowdsource initiative with tens of thousands of healthcare providers across thousands of health systems in the US and Europe to help us build, annotate, curate, and collect that knowledge. And as we started to dig into these heart sounds and the interpretations, we found something rather fascinating. Again, that subjectivity began to emerge. One physician would say, this heart sound is clearly from a patient who has disease and represents risk for cardiovascular disease. And another physician would listen to the exact same heart sound and say it's completely normal and healthy and there's no risk for this patient here. There was no ground truth, no objectivity. Who could we trust in that situation? Because the stethoscope has been so, so subjective, has been so driven by each individual physician's interpretation, there wasn't any gold standard that we could rely upon. The answer, again, came through crowd, through being able to collect annotations and interpretations from a wide variety of clinicians. We built a software tool that allowed us to send out annotation projects to cardiology experts across the country and around the world. And we asked them to give us their interpretations multiple times. We could get a second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth second opinion or opinion to help us provide the most precise, most accurate assessment possible. And we paid them per patient to help us label, annotate, and provide these patient records. Bit by bit, record by record, we built the world's largest repository of heart sounds, lung sounds, and curated that to help us train and ingest and lay the foundation for those AI models. Now today, these AI models are trained on hundreds of thousands of patient records and tens of millions of individual data points. With just 15 seconds of heart sound captured from a patient, we can provide a highly accurate interpretation of the likelihood that that patient has cardiovascular disease and the likelihood that there are abnormal heart sounds or lung sounds present there. The FDA has cleared these AI for use in the clinic in the United States, and they're currently helping screen thousands of patients on a daily basis. In a recent demonstration, we pit the AI against an array of providers, and we gave them the same question. Tell us if you think this sound represents a healthy patient or disease. Do that simple, straightforward process, and do it again and again and again. And what we found was when we compared the performance of the AI versus the panel of providers, we found that the AI outperformed nine out of 10 of the healthcare providers. And the AI doesn't get tired, doesn't have a bad day, doesn't need to take lunch breaks. It's able to deliver that consistency, that objectivity, and the reliability to make the physical exam, make the stethoscope exam an early opportunity for cardiovascular and pulmonary disease detection. But we're not stopping there. We are extremely excited about the ways that AI can improve access to excellent car quality cardiovascular and pulmonary disease care around the world and in the United States. We see the opportunity to upskill a frontline health professional who may not have seen many heart sounds before, who may not have that clinical confidence and give them the capability of that cardiologist in their pocket. And we can do this with very minimal training. We think the public health implications of this are exciting and hopefully meaningful, and that we can help deliver incredible quality. We can democratize access to incredible quality cardiovascular and pulmonary disease care around the country. It's very motivating for us. We continue to be fascinated by the fundamentals of the human heart, its deep connection to our emotional and our mental health. And the scientific breakthroughs continue to show us that it, as we examine our heart in just the right ways, we can learn more than we could ever imagine. We also firmly believe in the potential of AI to help us change how we think about detecting respiratory and pulmonary conditions like COPD, asthma, and pneumonia. When you breathe in and breathe out, 
encoded in that sound is information about the constriction or relaxation of your airways, the presence of fluid in your lungs, and just information about our overall respiratory health. We imagine a future where these clinical tools, these AI algorithms, can help patients with chronic respiratory conditions get real-time information about their conditions and better manage these incredibly costly and deadly diseases. Across many disciplines in medicine, from radiology to oncology to human genomics, and yes, even the fundamental, humble, basic stethoscope, we are seeing the ways that AI can help physicians and healthcare providers make sense of complex data and have confidence in their decision making. And we think the impact on patient outcomes and hopefully cost can be profound in the future. Our hearts are the centers of both incredible human physiology, pumping hundreds of, blood, hundreds of gallons of blood to every tissue and organ and cell in our body, and also the centers of our emotions, the, the receptor that indicates whether we are stressed out or anxious or calm or at peace. So hey, I think maybe the musician Roxette said it best when she said, just listen to your heart and your lungs too, and we recommend AI. Thank you.